trains have long been the lifeblood of thriving communities, and the largest city in the country is no exception. Over 200,000 commuters ride these rails in and out of Toronto on a daily basis. But some of the bridges that span the lakeshore run to the west of downtown are reaching the century mark in age and will need to be updated. When it comes to the largest one spanning the Humber River, complete replacement is the order of the day. The spans of this bridge will need to be lifted out one at a time and replaced, and it'll have to be done fast. But with their immense size and a tight time frame, that's no small order. That's where the experts in rapid replacement step in. Western Mechanical is on the job. When we catch up with the crew, they've already replaced the first four spans of this bridge the previous weekend. We'll join them for an in-depth look at the final four. A lot of planning went into this job back at Western's headquarters in Barrie, Ontario and their engineers worked tirelessly to come up with a perfect game plan. Behind me is a piece of equipment that we have called the SBL 1100s. They're, they're the heart of this project and how we're gonna accomplish the job. They can lift 1100 metric tons on their own and they can stroke up to a height of 12 meters. We knew that it was gonna take very unique ways to get this job done. We wouldn't be able to do it effectively with cranes. And if there's one company that knows how to harness all that lifting power, it's Western Mechanical. We are just pulling the old span out. We're going to raise it up, bring it over, and then we'll remove the old bearings, and then we'll be able to load it onto uh, some rail cars. And then once the span is out and uh, it's rolling down the line, then they bring the new span in and we basically just reverse the order. Considering the thousands of commuters that depend on this rail corridor, the only working hours available are during limited weekend closures. It's a massive scope of work to be completed in just a 52-hour work window. The track closes promptly at 11 p.m. and Western's partners on this job, Sonson Construction, ready the first of the four spans to come out this weekend. Sonson's prepped already down below. They've cut the tie rods and the rods that hold the bearings down. Then they had to remove the end section uh, just to give us some clearance, right, because it's very tight. With the first span free, Western springs into action. They begin by attaching the span to the gantry using adjustable steel hangers. Just touch her up a bit. To allow for proper clearance, the team will have to lift each span in several steps. We don't want to lift too high because obviously the higher we get, the less stable we are, right? So we had to come up 40 inches, put some stands underneath, to accept the load to sit back down and then shorten their rigging up top. And then we just start coming up out of the hole. Okay guys, we're uh, reset here and ready to come up, if you guys are. Yeah, are you ready to lift? Yeah, we're up all the time, going up. And as day breaks, the first span is lowered onto a set of dollies so that the bearings can be cut free. Once removed, the span is raised again lowered onto a waiting train cart, and wheeled out of the way. Meanwhile, off-site, the new span has been trucked in and loaded onto another rail cart. Because of the access of this project, we weren't able to actually have the bridge spans prepped and ready to go at the site. So we used our rail team to actually take the bridge spans from the Via Rail Yard and transport them day of. It's ready to be brought in as soon as the coast is clear. Once on site, the new span is lifted into the air so that the new bearings can be slid underneath and attached. And finally, the new span is hoisted into place. Once the span is locked into position, the gantry moves on down the tracks to hook onto its second victim.
just like clockwork, the second span is taken out, the bearings are removed, and it's carted off site. The new span that will complete this portion of the job is wheeled on down the track for final installation. The new bearings are fitted into place and the span goes airborne. They're coming over with the bearing. This span is completed in plenty of time for new track installation and a Monday morning reopening. The following weekend, the entire process is repeated on the final span of this project. This type of job, it's a lot of tiny little steps that have to be put in order. And uh, if you get one thing out of order, it's just disaster. So the first run there was really good to confirm that we were where we needed to be in terms of all those little steps. And then we were able to tweak a few of them to make things a little bit easier on the guys. Once we were at the end, we had made up a lot of time from that first span and we had perfected it, I would say. And that perfection has all led up to this moment, as the crew removes the final span of this replacement. The last piece to this massive puzzle is lowered into place with time to spare. Western secures the span and makes way for the other trades to come in and complete this job. We utilized every moment that we had it's important to remember too that we're one step in this bridge process. There's a lot of other steps that happen after that and so it's important for us to make sure we hit our mark. That gets the next guy in and then the next guy in and the next guy in, and that's exactly what we did, yeah. We're pretty efficient that way. Trains run across these rails on Monday morning and life in the city continues uninterrupted. This replacement went off without a hitch and it wouldn't have been possible without the efficiency and lifting power of Western Mechanical.